What's going on guys, Zed here, bringing you another Marvel Midnight Suns video, and this one is going to be patch 1.20 of the mod that I've been working on with Louise. Um, however, just before we get into that, I also want to take this opportunity to showcase that I have created basically a master guide or a master reference that shows all the changes. It talks a little bit about it on the left side here, all the links that are relevant to myself or Louise, the balance mod itself, the uh, Discord, everything that you would want pretty much uh, is in the middle here. And then all the patch notes and the videos associated will also be on this right side. Um, but just to give you an idea of what you're looking at, this would be if you're interested in the mod or you want like a, a screenshot snapshot of what's changed without having to open up all the patch notes or memorize it. Um, so what I've done here basically is just, this is the item that's changed. This is what it is on the base game. And then uh, this is what it currently is. And then very, very briefly, I basically pull what I say in the videos and I talk about it on the right. And I have this done for everything, including patch 1.20. And then also the game system mechanic changes, such as the change of bleed, as well as how you acquire uh, legendary cards. So this is a thing. I'm going to link this in all the patch notes videos. It's also going to be on the patch notes. I'm going to update that after this recording. And then um, it will also be in the description going forward. And it's on the mod. It's everywhere. Like if you if you're accessing the mod, you can access this page. Uh, eventually, I do want to get images of each card, but that's that's going to take a very long time. Uh, so this is what you get. <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted to kind of showcase this, um, and it's kind of fun, at least for me, to see how much each character has changed in the grand scheme of things, because I honestly forget. Um, so this is a thing. It's in the description if you need it, if you want it. There you go. But on to why you're here. Let's talk about the balance patch. So version 1.20. Um, this is, of course, the first patch since Venom's release. And so there will be some Venom changes. We'll save him till the end. Timestamps are below, as always. And, well, let's just get right into it. So um, this patch is good. It's our third big patch. And... You know, we've done some bug fixes along the way, small tweaks, nothing worth making a video over, but, you know, this this is. And essentially, I'm pretty happy now with all 30 Hunter cards after one change on this patch, and all 10 cards on each hero. I would say nothing really sticks out to me as being egregiously weak anymore. Um, nothing is really bad enough that I wouldn't consider it at least. There are still some cards that some players may go, ah, you know, what the hell is this? But... I don't think so, actually. I, I'm pretty happy now with everything on this list. Uh, so, let's go through what's changed. Um, overall gameplay, Just this is just a commentary. Uh, I think the change to Bleed is good. I think a lot of players who have talked about it or have given feedback really enjoy it. Um, it makes the Bleed mod much better, and it also makes the enemies that apply Bleed much better too. And I'm never going to complain about a little extra difficulty, uh, so that's great. So first up for characters is Hunter. So in the last patch, it was entirely about Hunter. If you haven't tried a Tank Hunter build or um, a DPS Light Hunter build, please do. Uh, tank Hunter using the Power Tree feels amazing. It's so much fun. It's still pretty powerful as a DPS, but its primary role is, of course, the tank. It's super, super fun. Um, I even enjoy the new version of Summon Charlie. It doesn't feel so bad to play. And, uh, you know... Dark Hunter DPS is still very, very powerful, especially with the new Dark Blessing. But it has a little bit more inherent risk, which makes it a lot more fun, a bit more strategic, and how you how you keep yourself alive and things of that nature. So I really, I really enjoy where the Hunter is right now. Uh, however, just as one little touch-up, I felt like All Out Plus from regular didn't have enough changes for my taste. So I amped up the damage just a little bit because I feel like uh, Hunter already has a hard time contesting a lot of... Um, heroic card slots so this is just to bring it a little more in line with cards like wild strike morning star yeah other or fury right other sort of burst damage cards uh that do damage so just a small change nothing nothing crazy blade no changes i think he's great where he is captain america again no changes i think he's great where he is i might look at changing punch down the road it's kind of a Let's be honest, it's not a bad card, but it's it's a pretty boring card. So we'll see, we'll see. But first up for real changes, uh, Captain Marvel. So the last patch addressed a lot of what Captain Marvel was struggling with, right? Binary, her passive, Supernova, uh, 
uh, like everything, right? Everything. Rain of blows, blah, blah, blah. But there was still one missing, and that, of course, was regroup. And the reason why I didn't address regroup until now is because I didn't, I wasn't super confident in what I wanted to do with it. Because I didn't want to break the card, I didn't want to break the character. That's never my intention with these changes. Quite the opposite. I want to bring them all in line. And uh, even though she was in a great spot after last patch, this card still stuck out. And the problem with regroup is not its stats. The stats are great. The problem is it doesn't really accomplish a job that she needs. And then you always want to mod it with free because you want to use it to generate... Um, a binary stack, right? But then if you mod it with free, you're not going to get the bonuses like apply resist, gain block, blah, 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 right? So my plan here was basically, you know what? Let's just give it free because now if you're bringing this defensive statted card, it's not going to feel so wasteful. It still works in tandem with her offensive game plan kit. Now note that the block and healing gained is based off of her HP, not her offense, which is why binary doesn't change the power level of regroup whatsoever, even if it is free. And also by making it free, it opens up the mod selections. This was one of those cards where it was free mod or no mod. Uh, it was free mod or don't take the card. And I never liked that. I hate when that's the dynamic. Uh, so... This is great now. You can just burn a card in your hand, use it to gain binary, and also it synergizes better with One Step Ahead because if you drew, if you were using Regroup in your deck and you played One Step Ahead and you drew into Regroup, it was like, Ugh, I really don't want that to gain binary right now. So if you use One Step Ahead and you draw into you know a Quick Jab and or a Regroup now, you're gonna be feeling great. You're gonna get two or all your binary stacks right there if you had all three, and so on and so forth. So. This was the last card I needed to touch on Marvel. I was really happy with this change. It may seem obvious now in hindsight, but in the moment I was like, I don't know what to do with this card. Is it underpowered? Does it need more stats? Does it need draw power? Does it need this? Does it need that? And these are all the things I think about when I'm thinking about these balances. But usually the simplest solution, or at least the most elegant solution in my opinion, has been uh, nothing too complicated, which may sound hypocritical when we start going down this list a little bit. Uh, so that's Captain Marvel. I think she feels great now. I've been using her a lot on my new playthrough, which I've been streaming. It's also being uploaded to YouTube as I go through, and she's just great now. Uh, I love it. I love it. Doctor Strange, he's still very good, even after the Vapors rework, but he still had, he also had some outlying cards that I just didn't quite know how to fix, um, and those were Shield of the Seraphim and Bolt of Balthog. Uh, Shield of the Seraphim, right, after making Vapors apply resist, obviously it was... You know, it, it kind of went without saying that shield needed to be tweaked a little bit. And the reason for that is, you know, at, at heroism cost three and, and enhanced six, to, it, it just was too expensive compared to vapors because usually you don't need to give resist to the whole team. It's just one person. So that dynamic I wasn't super happy with. Uh, so what we did is we decreased the heroism cost, the base heroism cost to uh, two, and then we changed the enhanced version down to five. So we lowered them both by one. Um, this was just to clean it up a little bit, make it just a little easier to use the upgraded version and uh, a little bit nicer to just play. So now, if you think about it this way, right? Vapors of Eltor is a skill card heroism generating apply resist to one ally and a heal. Whereas Shield of the Seraphim is a two heroism costing um, apply resist to everybody and cure everybody with the potential to give multiple resist and other things via mods. So it still might be not a great card, but if those situations where there's no fallen enemy uh, or you just really love, you know, resist stacking or you love full support strange, this will feel a lot better. Bolt of Balthok, this card's not, I've said this before, I've said it again, I'll say it again. Uh, Bolt of Balthok is not a bad card. It's that it has to compete with nine other cards that are pretty good, right? Um, Astral Meditation sees some use here and there, depending if you're an item user. Shield of the Seraphim also sees some use here and there. Blessing of the Vashanti, etc., etc. So, Bolt of Balthok is not a bad card, but I did want to incentivize using it without Enhanced. So, Enhanced Bolt of Balthok is incredible, right? And Enhanced, uh, I think it's Enhanced 6, the, the max level is a very good card, especially if you mod quick on it. But baseline, without enhanced, it just felt dreadful. 100% modifier just feels bad. It feels really, really bad, uh, especially when you're competing with Winds of Watum for your attack cards. So I just wanted to give it a little nudge in the right direction, and, and it's the base damage changing. So yes, every breakpoint is 25% stronger, 
sort of, in that the, the skill will only be a net 25% stronger, not 25 and then another and then another. So this is just a nice little touch to push it in the direction of maybe I will take this now. And also I found that DPS Doctor Strange was not impossible, but it felt like you were really trying to force it. Now with the changes I've made to Blessing of the Vashanti and uh, now Bolt to Balthok, I think it's definitely something you could do. Uh, I've been messing around with it a lot on the current run and I really, I enjoy it. That's it for him. Uh, Ghost Rider, I love the changes we made to Ghost Rider. Drain Soul now being zero cost based and not, not being thrown at you because of the passive is incredible. But uh, the initial use still felt kind of ho-hum. So I just wanted to give just a little nudge and it's a little nudge because if I increased it too much, because uh, it is a chain card that scales, it would end up being too powerful inevitably, uh, particularly on story missions with two parts. So just a small little tap, that way when you use it a second time, a third time, uh, you're really seeing those damage, those incremental damage increases. Uh, so nothing crazy here, just a little bit, and it's only on the upgraded version as well. Nothing really to say here. And then don't forget, you do get strengthened from Hellmouth, so that will amplify this power as well. Hulk. So this is our first sort of rework for this character and in general on this patch. <clears throat> Let's talk about this. Hulk, I think, is in a great spot on the patch and he had a few cards kind of sticking out, always angry being the number one um, offender. So all, always angry is kind of a strange design in that the name doesn't really ref reflect what it does because it reduces your rage, it reduces your anger. It's kind of weird, right? And it's very expensive to use for what it does. And I just was never really happy with it. It was on the watch list right from the beginning, if you recall. So I didn't know quite what I wanted to do. So after kind of reading some chatter in the Discord and kind of thinking about it, I thought, okay, how do we not change what the card is doing in terms of being a healing card? Because I didn't want to upgrade a Hulk's base health because then he would just be inherently broken. Uh, especially with all the buffs I've given him. But then how do we make it so that it doesn't take, like, how do we make it useful, right? And to save you some time, I basically concluded that Always Angry should somehow benefit your rage. And I wanted to keep the healing factor of Always Angry because he doesn't have any access to healing otherwise. So, okay, great. So here's what we did. It is still a skill card that generates two heroism. That doesn't change. New effect, restore health, 50% of max HP is the scaling, overhealing increases Hulk's maximum health, gain two rage, exhaust. Now, just to give you a reference point, uh, the amount of healing might seem like a lot. Oh, 50%, oh, what? what? And if you use it at full health, then he's a 50 per Yes. The reason, or the thing you have to remember though, is always angry in the, in the vanilla game is 33% max healing, healing per rage stack. So, at 1 at 33, 266, 3 died, he died. Excuse me, a uh, very busy day. And so this is like one and a half, right? And I did that so that it wasn't super, super crazy, but it still made sense with how Always Angry worked on vanilla. I never want to try to make these changes or reworks too dramatic of a shift in playstyle. Um, there's only going to be one exception to that so far, you know, off the top of my head, and that's going to be Iron Man, which we'll talk about after. And. So anyway, it heals now, it overheals, gain health, gain rage exhaust. You can play this turn one and feel great about it. It'll help get rage without using challenging roar. And it's it's really, really nice. And then on upgrade, it does maintain that increased maximum rage by one. Again, to reflect what Always Angry Plus did compared to the base uh, version on the regular game. <laughs> Sorry, that sentence was probably a little confusing, but you probably get my point. This version of Always Angry, it's definitely not, you know, OP. You still may not use it in your decks, admittedly. You don't need to. You still may prefer Double Challenging Roar. But with, when Always Angry and Challenging Roar were his only skill cards, Always Angry was just never, ever, ever the move. Uh, ever. So, now it's a nice card. It's a good tank card. And if you're a big Hulk fan, I'm sure you'll love this. And even if you're not, uh, this is a great card now. All right. And then the last, oh, the last one, pardon me was Crush. Crush, he, I didn't want to change much here because he does have access to a lot of stun and now there's a lot more stun access in the game. However, with the addition of Venom, I did want to kind of give give it a bit more thematic love. So all we did was we added a bind to the card. So now it is basically identical to Merciless because if you, if you don't know, Merciless when upgraded applies to stuns 
or bind. And we just made crush be the exact same thing. So now, yes, it's still niche. Yes, you still have to use a setup, but it's designed that way. And I like to keep the design philosophies um, in the reworks when I can. And so this just makes it you know, arguably twice as easy to use. And with the introduction of Venom and Symbiote Bind, plus the uh, Symbiote Shell passive buffs on the Hunter that we did last patch, Crush could see a lot more use from people who want to go for more uh, focused or niche builds, right? So keep in mind that this buff really only matters on the mod in the base game. This card still sucks, uh, but on the mod, now you'll notice that there's a lot more ways to, to get it going, okay? Uh, and that's it for Hulk. Iron Man, okay. So Iron Man has not seen too many changes on the patch because I think he's in a really good spot. I did nerf Precision. I did nerf Hellfire Beam. We did fix it, by the way, so that Precision now can be re or redrawn down to zero heroism. I, we did not re recognize that uh, the rework was going to just stop at two redraws. And so when you redrew it at one, it just discarded. And that wasn't what we wanted. So uh, that's fixed. If you experienced that, I'm sorry, uh, but we have fixed it. Now, new plan needed a seriously new design, and this card was awful. There was never, ever, ever a reason to use it. You'd overcap your your heroism all the time. It was just awful for a support build. It was never worth the deck slot. Nobody should have been using base new plan. This was like always angry on the cart on the watch list. Excuse me for a very, very long time. So after discussing in the Discord a little bit, uh, while keeping some of the integrity of what I wanted to push it towards, here's what we came up with. It is still a skill card. However, it now generates a base two heroism rather than doubling. That's different. And the new effect is discard your hand, draw two ally cards, meaning only cards from the decks of the other teammates. In other words, no Iron Man cards can be drawn with this card. Plus one move, final exhaust. And then on upgrade, it is plus one move and redraw, final exhaust. Now, I want to talk about really the logic behind this card first. Because I do talk about it a little bit up here, but not in great detail. So in my head, right, when I think of new plan, I think, okay, well, obviously he needs a new plan. You need a contingency, right? Plan B. And the way I saw it for Iron Man is the new plan should be he's not the carry anymore, right? So the idea is he just sacrifices his carry factor so that his team can, can shine, right? And so the way I did that was discard your hand. Well, why that? Well, even though a lot of people view it as a negative, the devs think, seem to think it's a negative. I'm sorry, it's not. It's really not a negative. The way the math works and the way the decks work in terms of cycling through your discard pile... I promise you discarding your hand is not a negative, okay? Uh, but that actually has a function. Now, what are the biggest complaints about Iron Man is, oh, you know, I can't get rid of his clunky cards. Oh, I have Blast in hand and I don't want to redraw it twice. Oh, I have Hellfire Beam in hand. I just literally can't get rid of it. Well, that's where a new plan comes in. So new plan will allow you to discard your Iron Man cards that are clunking up your hand, then proceed to draw two non-Iron Man cards, and then the plus one move and redraw, this is just simply to give you some extra resources. Final, because I don't want new plan to still allow Iron Man to function. Again, this is more of a thematic change, kind of like, um, well, we'll get to Scarlet Witch. But the idea is he's sacrificing his care factor. He's like, hey, homies, you do it now, right? So I purposely wanted to do it that way. And then exhaust, not for really any reason other than I don't think he would actually want to play this card more than once uh, in a mission, once or twice. So kind of like a double up on the last patch or on a patch, I gave it exhaust back because you really don't want to see it more than once. I think this card kind of follows that trend as well. I don't think I'd want to play this more than once or twice, but if that was something I wanted as an option, I would love to have it, right? Now, there is an argument that maybe it's not strong enough with just one redraw on upgrade. Something I did ponder was, should I give this card a redraw effect as well? Maybe, maybe, I've thought about that. So if the card is seemingly underpowered, I will consider doing that, keep it in line with the character, but then if you play it base, it's still fine, but if you redraw it, then play it, then maybe it's decent. I'm not sure, but this is something I had thought about. Um, so in general, I think this card is nice to have. It's not broken by any means. It can't get free mod, uh, so it's fine. 
and this is a oh my god my hand is just full of iron man junk he was dazed he was stunned whatever uh now you can just dump it start over again and then so on and so now you might think two ally cards oh that's not enough well the idea is it, you discarded your hand right then that's one card play because new bait new plan can't get free right so that's one draw two ally cards okay no matter what you draw you can play both those cards okay oh my turn's over okay great then there's an argument that because of the plus one redraw on the card you could redraw something into a draw card draw more cards or if you're using things like nico captain america yada yada there's ways to get cards so Two cards might not be enough. Maybe I make it three if I'm so bold. Uh, we'll see. But that is the new new plan. And give it a shot if you haven't. I really like this. It's still not really my style personally. Just as a the way I build Iron Man. I don't build him as a carry. But I'm not 100% sure that I would want new plan with how I like the character. But I, that said, I am going to try it. Because I want to show different builds on my current playthrough right that's the whole point of of the modded playthroughs so i will build it into my deck and see how it goes um but yeah it it's it's nice that's iron man that's iron man magic this one's a lot of fun okay so gather is the only card we changed but here's the thing right balancing magic around non limbo's grasp decks is almost impossible why well because limbo's grasp not only is it a really strong card just with the what it does but it's pretty integral to her damage output right a non limbo's grasp or a limbo's grasp list magic's damage is just absolute dog water so cards like vanilla gather trap door uh soul blast these cards were just not good uh it was they were so bad so Here's what I did. Gather does decent damage. It, it, honestly, it's pretty decent damage. It's a massive AoE, especially upgraded. And it can apply a debuff, which is great, right? Weaken, uh, bleed, whatever. However, one thing that was always annoying was when you would use it around an AoE and they would go plop, 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 plop. Either they didn't go where you wanted them to, or you wish you could have moved them more, right? And so I thought, you know, what if... What if we made Gather work like Trapdoor, where we move everyone in that AoE to a different location to set up your team with no restrictions? So that's what we did. <laughs> um, that's what we did. I, I asked Luis if we could do it. He figured it out. So if you use it currently at the time of this video, the animation is a little wonky. Instead of showing the stab the ground, open the portal, get sucked up, plop, 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 plop. It skips all that. That's something that's just part of the problem that's just part of our limitations as modders in midnight suns but it does work all the enemies do move if they're supposed to die they do die but it's just a sort of like instant teleport just re over there but it now works as an aoe trapdoor that can still apply a debuff so now it has a really nice utility function i would definitely consider bringing this as a one-off in my deck if i was using characters that were a bit more synergetic such as or needed more setup, excuse me, like Hell Rat on Ghost Rider, Scarlet Witch on the patch, now that she's all AoE focused, um, Hulk if you're using Seismic Slam, right, Blade Storm, all these things. If you have a, a nice AoE team comp, bringing a gather is just a point, click, you go here, or all of you guys go here, now is going to seem uh, very, very strong. So this is great. I'm glad we got this to work. It makes it feel a lot more intuitive as well. And if you want to plop them in the same area, you can still do that, right? So I haven't changed how it works in a in a restrictive way or a negative way. I've simply given it extra functionality, right? That was the idea. Um, Nico, not much to say here other than Curse was a card that I meant to do in the last patch. I definitely forgot. A <laughs> uh, bit of an oversight. I wanted to give it a damage buff. It still might need more of a damage buff. But I want to say, and I will preface this, Nico, I want to change a lot. I want to completely redo the roulette. I want to change her card scaling. I also want to increase her base offensive number because it's incredibly low for no reason. She is a character that I, I want to spend more time on. And so right now, every change she's gotten, I think with the exception of the double up plus getting exhaust back and an extra heroism, has been damage related. So, but I do want to make more systematic changes to her. We're just not quite there yet. 
Okay, so just a small buff to Curse. Because you would never play this for the damage, you would only play it for the debuff. And that just felt really bad, right? So, yeah. Scarlet Witch, uh, she, as of the last patch, is insane. She's so good, she's so fun to play, but she still takes a bit of effort, a bit of setup, a bit of thinking, so it keeps that, that tactical game plan in mind. The new way to use Hexfield, where it's a point, click, go here, then explode, just like Supernova, feels incredibly good. It synergizes with her passive, no more, things like that. No more feels great to run now, it doesn't kill her. Uh, detonate feels great unleashed feels great you don't even have to take unleash and the deck still feels great it's she's i love all the changes that that we've made to her but there was one thing missing i definitely forgot to do it in the last patch that i forgot and that was i wanted to add final to no more now this is a nerf yes however i wanted this to be the case because even though she doesn't die now on the mod I still want it to be finite, right? I want to keep, the, remember what I said, I want to keep the design philosophy in check. Meaning on vanilla, she kills herself, but on my mod, I just want it to be final, right? So it, in essence, she still cannot act for that turn, but she didn't die for it, right? So that's that, not much to say there. Now, I will say, this uh, this change is pretty dramatic. Okay, let, let, let's just preface that. Now, I'm just double-checking something really, really quick. Um, okay, great. I was just double-checking to see if Louis got this done the right way, and he did. So, this one's a fun one. Chain Strike is awful, right? I think we can all agree. Chain Strike just feels absolutely dreadful. And Spider-Man's whole niche is environmental damage, or at least it should be his whole niche. Especially as of last patch, his his passive got buffed now. And with the release of Venom, they're way too similar for my taste. I do not like homo uh, hege hegemony, homo homogeny, uh, whatever. I don't like how, the, how uh, homogenized the two characters are becoming. So I'm pushing Spider-Man in one direction. And that is I'm pushing him more towards environmental attacks and interactions. So of course you still have opportunist, right? That's that's a no-brainer. Um, but instead, what I've done to add some differentiation between the two characters, and now that we've seen how assimilation is designed, I've changed a couple of his cards to be what they are. So chain strike, new effect. Forget how it works before, right? Chain kill, chain kill, chain kill, chain kill. It doesn't work that way anymore. Period. End of discussion. Base card, new effect, chain two, that's base. It has nothing to do with killing characters anymore, okay? And the damage modifier in the base game was 100. I lowered it to 50. This is because you cannot have a chain card dealing like 100 to 125 with no limitations. That's too strong because then if you go 1-2 or 1-2-3, then you're dealing, you know, 375 damage. Like, that's not acceptable, right? So I, do had, I did have to nerf the base damage. But new effect, the next two Spider-Man environmental attacks deal more damage 75% offensive ratio. So this is actually more than opportunist, by the way. Opportunist is only 50. So this is a stronger version of opportunist in in this sense. Now, why did I do this? Well, because Chain Strike now base is an okay card, right? Even if you didn't use the environmental attacks, it's still okay, right? And then on upgrade, it's just Chain 3, 75% damage. Chain 3, 75% is actually still pretty good like it's it's decent right um so you're not going to feel bad about playing it later on in the mission but really the other thing is the next two spider-man environmental attacks that doesn't go away so you don't have to use them the same turn or the turn after however with this passive changed uh the percentage it's now 40 percent on the mod you can reliably get that heroism refund when you do use environmental attacks so this card now it just feels great. It's way more in line with what his kit wants to do. It doesn't have that god-awful effect it had before. So now this should be something you consider. It works really well with Web Slinger now, by the way. And all in all, this these changes to Chain Strike were to try to bring DPS Spider-Man in the fold. Because I'm sorry, I don't care what you Spider-Man fanboys say. Damage or DPS Spider-Man was a freaking meme on vanilla. And it is a meme on vanilla, okay? Okay. 
So this chain strike rework on top of the added damage to web throw in the last one, on top of, you know, up here's a great card on top of web slinger. Now you're starting to build a really coherent deck. Okay. And the next change, this one is because of assimilation. I, I looked at assimilation and I'm like, yeah, this does not need to be a heroic card or infernal spider. That is it's, if assimilation is what it is. So Infernal Spider, the effects are exactly the same. You get, you know, a couple of free plays. Um, but now it's a skill card that gives you tier heroism rather than a heroic card that costs you four. So yeah, DPS Spider-Man is definitely uh, not a joke. Not a joke. Wolverine, no changes. Deadpool, okay. So on top of all the damage changes that he got in the first two patches, or I guess just the first patch, and after really mauling it over, I decided where I wanted to take the character. And that was, I want him to be a high single target damage character, which he is, tank. Okay, so we have, you know, Hulk has a lot of damage, but pretty awful tanking. Wolverine has good tanking on the mod, great tanking on the mod, but not great single target damage, right? Uh, Captain Marvel, same thing. Her single target or her damage in general is insanely good, but it's conditional, right? Binary. Captain America's damage in general just is kind of ass. So we don't really have a tank that does high single target damage, right? And so while I'm not turning Deadpool into a tank necessarily, I'm just giving him more tank-like properties. So staying alive passive. I, in the base game, both versions are 15%. I've now increased them to 25%. Very simple. Now, each turn you're getting 25%, and Fuego stacking is still 5 per HP. Uh, is, uh, or sorry, it's an additional 5% HP per Fuego stack, excuse me. So that's really nice. His pass is really good. And then spread the love. This card is rough it's it's awful on vanilla in the last patch or two i gave it extra damage quite significantly so that's nice but i've made two changes now the first one being on both of both versions full combo gain one resist this is simply just to give him access to another resist like i said i kind of want to lean a little bit more into the tanking but also this makes it good at maintaining in fuego right um and then on the upgraded version i have now increased base number chain from one to two Reason why is if you noticed the base spread the love chain was two with no Infuego modifier, but the upgrade was chain one with no Infuego modifier or with the Infuego modifier, excuse me. So you had to have one Infuego for it to even be as chain worthy as the first as the base version. I always thought that was stupid. So now on upgrade, your base chain is still two and any Infuego you get will simply increase it rather than one in Fuego to bring it back on par. I don't know why they did that. That's the dumbest thing ever about the card. And then again, still has gain one resist. Magdump does a ton of damage, but it's expensive. And so this card is great when you're in Fuego stacking. And again, I'm trying to push Deadpool in that direction of make it worth it, but not necessary. And I would say that you don't have to in Fuego stack with him now, but if you want to, I'm just giving you the tools to do so. And Magdump Plus will simply do that. If you get a kill with it, boom, one resist, done. On top of, uh, you know, Hey Shit Face, on top of, you know, uh, what's his name? Doctor Strange, on top of th things like that, right? I'm just really trying to make him a bruiser with high single target damage. And I really like these changes. I'm happy with this now. The character has had so, so, so many buffs. So I'm going to kind of let people ruminate on it, try different builds, and then we're going to reassess Deadpool uh, from there. Okay, that's Deadpool. Okay, Venom. So Venom is a character who, honestly, I'm relatively happy with in the base game. Venom is a average character. Okay, I say very happy. That's because the bar was... Um, what was the bar? The bar was, uh, oh, Deadpool, <laughs> right? That's not, not super helpful. Um, so because of that, I definitely wanted to give him more of an identity for sure. And it is what it is. So here's, here's what we did, right? Um, I believe there's two ways to play the character. You either go assimilation as basically your only skill card on top of 
uh, two free, what is it called? Insatiable Hungers. You get draw last attack on both Insatiable Hungers plus Assimilate and you just go to town, right? That build is okay, but it's very high roll. It's very, you know, it still is okay. If your Ravenous goes down, you kind of have to rely on his passive, things like that, right? But then if you took him in more of a, a support direction, right? Debuffs on, uh, what's it called? Debuffs on Tendril Strike, debuffs on Devouring Strike, debuffs on Spike Burst, Symbiote Bind. All of a sudden, you don't want Assimilation, right? And 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 in general, if you're using Symbiote Bind, you don't want Assimilation. And I always, I hate that. I hate that. Spike Burst, you can never, ever, ever use it as a bind because it's only 10%. So you never, you could not even remotely begin to, to strategize around that, right? So... Here was my solution to these problems. Number one, web toss base and upgrade, give them base damage modifier. So Ravenous does not benefit web toss in ways that I want it to. And so that just sucked. <laughs> so by giving web toss a base damage modifier, it feels so much better to use now rather than only bringing Tendril Strike as your attack card. Lethal Strike is good in assimilation builds, but not in supportive builds at all. So Web Toss feels great. It's a forceful knockback in any direction. It's not quite on the level of Lash in terms of its power, but it does do more damage. So there is that. Um, Spike Burst. Spike Burst based and upgrade. Based and upgrade. I did the same thing too. Increased chance to bind from 10% to 25%, and reduced damage modifier from 150% to 125. Now the reason I did this was because I don't feel like Spike Burst should be, you know, that high damage and bind i want i think it should be you know a bit more bindy a bit less damagey so that's all i just didn't want to overtune the card and i feel like i wanted to, wanted to push spike burst into being more of the supportive option uh, and the reason why is he has a lot of heroic cards that you might want to use and so spike burst now at 25 percent chance to bind is very very good uh sure you can't rely on it but you can definitely try to work with it right uh so that was that was my intention and then Symbiote Bind. So this was an interesting um, choice, if you will. On redraw, gain one fast. Seems a bit strange, right? So let me explain why that is. The idea here was, okay, the problem with Symbiote Bind is not the card itself necessarily. It's very similar to Thwip or, or, or Crimson Bands of Ceterac, whatever. Uh, symbiote Shell into Symbiote Bind after the Hunter is a, mar is a little bit better, but whatever. The problem with Symbiote Bind is when you drew it with Assimilation, right? You didn't want to play it because it wouldn't cycle Assimilation again. But then Symbiote Bind's upgrade effect is kind of wants you to keep attacking after it, right? So I was like, okay, but what if you use Assimilation, you draw Symbiote Bind, you don't want Symbiote Bind because it doesn't do damage and you have to kill something in order to activate Assimilation and blah, blah, blah. So I wanted that moment to... Be, or at least have some sort of a remedy and that was to give on redraw gain fast why because symbiote you know you play assimilation you kill something you draw symbiote bind you're probably going not quite what i wanted on my assimilation turn right specifically this turn i don't want this card so people were just axing it from the deck and i didn't like that same with support you were just axing assimilation you didn't even bring it because you were like well shit, this doesn't even work with what i want right and I don't like that. I want you to be able to run Assimilation and feel good about it. Because it's a legendary card, right? So now, if you draw Symbiote Bind with Assimilation, you redraw it. Instead of giving you one Heroism, which I didn't want to do, you gain one fast. Well, why didn't I do one Heroism? Simply because that's just stronger. But also, I did like the idea that it was strictly for selfish reasons, right? The Assimilation into the Symbiote Bind redraw uh, was selfish. Plus two, it does give Venom fast for later if you didn't need the bind, but you wanted the fast. Boom, there you go. Makes Tasty Brains a bit cheaper, etc. That's also why I didn't lower Tasty Brains' cost, uh, was because of this change. And so, yeah, this is just a solution where you played a simulation. Oh no, I drew into a symbiote bind. What do I do? Well, that was why, that moment was why I did this. Um, on redraw gain one fast is not a very strong ability in almost any other context in the game um, but for this situation for this specific card for this specific character i feel like it was the right call 
And for now, that's all we have for Venom. I think he's really close to being in a great spot. This web toss makes it a great damaging card. This spike burst change makes it a great support card. And now Symbiote Bind can see play in both DPS and support Venom builds. I think this is a great version of the character. And last up, we're on the watch list. A bit faster than normal. We're not even at an hour yet. So not much to say here. I'm actually getting into a really good spot with the game or the mod. So number one, Hulk might be a bit strong now. I'll have to see how he fares in the end game since he fell off before. So that's referring to the fact that in late game, typically your Hulk is a world breaker bot. You world breaker then basically die. And hopefully always angry can combat that a bit, uh, but he might be a bit overtuned with all the buffs I've given him, which is ironic because I don't think he's that bad on vanilla, but yet the more you peel back the layers, the more holes he had in his game plan. I don't know, it's a bit weird. Um, the summon cards are still kind of meme right? They're still kind of bad, that being Summon Charlie, Deadly Ground, and Reinforcement. But I think they're fun to play now. They're not actively working against you to play. Deadly Ground is free, and Charlie and Reinforcement are skill cards that give you heroism. They can still be made to be free, right? All these things. So they're not great. I don't know if I want them to be amazing, though. So time will tell for those ones. And last up, further down the pipeline, we want to address different aspects of the game, not just cards. So that's things like bleed attack, bleed activating at the beginning of the turn, legendary cards obtainable out of epic coils, right? Things like that. Those are things that we kind of wanted to, to work on, right? Uh, but for now, the cards are in a great position. I think, like I said at the beginning with the disclaimer, all 30 Hunter cards and 10 of all the other Heroes cards should feel really nice to take or at least have a build. Every character definitely has two builds at least, and I know that for a fact. Um, even things like Double Up Synergies, Blessing of the Vashanti Synergies, even these are all really good now. So, yeah. That is the list. Uh, again, timestamps, links, everything you need will be in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you ever want to discuss more in depth about this, feel free to join the community discord, talk to myself or Louise. Uh, I can talk to you about the actual game and the balance decisions made on the patch or the mod. Whereas Louise, of course, is a bit more or, or is much more responsible uh, for the technical side of things. I just sort of bounce ideas off of him, uh, but he does all the, the technical work. <laughs> um so yeah again thanks so much for watching everybody i hope you enjoyed the mod please as always give me your feedback in the comments or on the discord i love kind of bouncing ideas off you guys and uh, i will see you next time peace for now